one. This is local anesthetic, part two, opioid. No, anesthesia, anesthesia, loss of sensation. And you might want to talk about how to get sensation. Get sensation from your receptor, transport to the nerve, onto the thalamus, trans sign up, and go to the cortex. And the cortex interpret the sensation. The local anesthetic cut off the impulse of transportation and the opioid block the new receptor so that pain sensation cannot get through. Now we talk about this part here. If the brain cannot interpret the sensation, there's no sensation recorded by the patient. If the patient does not remember any sensation, then she had no he or she had no sensation. So what you're talking about is mainly amnesia. So if we could produce amnesia in the patient, then he had no sensation. How do we produce amnesia? We don't really know. Because we don't know how to remember remember anything. Now, to produce amnesia, we only know that certain drugs that we use could produce amnesia. A bit is one of them. And the barbiturate use is pentothal. But we don't use pentothal very often anymore because the manufacturers do not make them because they don't make money on it. So we don't have any pentothal to use. Sometimes we use uh, methahexatol, but methahexatol is limited supply. The other drug we use right now is propofol. Propofol is a, a drug that's known as no other barbiturate has other barbiturate, but propofol is on its own. One drug, there's the oil base, so they have to emulsify it with some soil product and egg product. And it becomes a milky substance. And because of the milk, piece of thin, and because of the oil product, you tend to irritate the veins. So to give proper form, sometimes you have to give them local anesthetic mixed with it. Other drug that we can use to produce amnesia is any benzodiazepine group. And the one we use is midazolam. There's another benzodiazine group that we use, but we mainly use medazolam. And what it does, it produces amnesia. Of course, the producing is all dependent on the dosage, okay? And a small dose, You could it's mainly anxiety, anti anxiety drug. In a small dose patients feel very relaxed, the anxieties go down and a little bit of sedation. On a larger dose, they become comatose. So commentary become just a general anesthetic. So all those drugs depending on your dosage. The other drugs you can use, for example, use the phenotiazine. Phenotiazine group drug 
Hope you tell Fina from You throw phenom group of drugs, but they don't use it anymore. Not very often use. So the main drug we use is propofol and adrenaline. Now, to give a drug, of course, you have to know the action of the drug. And of course, you need to know the dosage. Then you know the half life. You have to know how the, met the drugs metabolize, eliminate it, and you know some of the side effects. Then you have to know the supply. So when you read up a drug, just go to those headings and you won't miss anything. Now, besides the dosage, of the drug, also the speed of injection because we always usually give the drug intermediately. When you give a drug intermediately, usually what happens is it, the plasma concentration rise and then slowly gone down. Phase one, phase two elimination. The therapeutic level may be here. So initially, we overshoot the therapeutic level and then slowly come down. When it overshoots the therapeutic level, you can have some side effect because you're overdosing the patient. Especially sometimes you get profile too quickly, you could drop the blood pressure quite substantially. So propofol should be given slowly. If you give it slowly, you may give the, get a curve like that. It's much better for the patient instead of overdosing the patient suddenly. And also I find that if you give propofol slowly, the effect is more profound. And to give a drug, every patient tolerance to the drug is so different. There's so many things that could happen to the drug when you're giving them, it's all depending on the volume of distribution, okay? When it's protein brown, okay. Also, the general general status of the patient. A very sick patient may tolerate very little, but the therapeutic level may be even here. So to give a drug, give it slowly and an incremented dose and you won't go into problem. Now how does this thing work? How did those arbitrate profile work? It work on the GABA receptor. A lot of work has been done by very clever people trying to find out exactly how it works. Uh, if you want to read about it, you can have to read about the ligand gate theory, which is pretty complicated. But essentially, the GABA receptor, you look at the GABA receptor to the top, GABA receptor consists of something like five units, and then each unit has five subunits. And those are protein coil molecules. And in the protein coil molecule, something like that, there are receptors along the way. And each drug has its own receptor. That's the basic thing. And once the drug attacks receptor, it changes the function of the GABA receptor. Usually for those drugs, it increase the function of the GABA receptor, so it decreases the consciousness. That's essential how it works. It's all depending on the dosage again. 
Small dose, you get some sedation. Large dose, you become comatose, become general anesthetic. So that's another way of losing sensation. It does not lose sensation, it's just that you don't remember the sensation. <laughs>